Hey, it's Alex Rackle from Board Game Co. And it's time for another Kickstarter round of video going through updates and new stuff and some drama around Fallen Knights and apparently other stuff. But let's go through it. Let's jump into it. As always, timestamps down below if you want to jump to any particular section. And starting off, we're going to start with an update around Darwin's Journey. This is not much of an update, really just covering the last few stretch goals they've added since the, uh, well, towards the end of the Kickstarter. We have two scenarios and crew cards since the last. We covered the Great Ship mini expansion last time. Then we have some special actions, the plastic insert, uh, some player with the boss player boards and eight wax seals and from this at this point i believe based on the update it sounded like they were fully stretched at this point it sounded like this is going to be everything but that's in case you wanted to be following what's going on with darwin's journey and this is thing like this thing's going to cost a million dollars before it's done which is absolutely insane i'm very happy for thunderworks games it, kudos to them good on them and and 11,608 people plus whoever else backs before the Kickstarter is over, will hopefully be very excited with their final game of Darwin's Journey. And short notes, I've covered this in the past. If past this, there's anything to go by, the deluxe versions of Thunderworks games tend to hold their value, at least initially. From there, we're going to go through Primal. Primal's going to have a bunch of updates because, well, I mean, I like Primal, first of all. It's obviously a good starting point. But from there, Primal. Primal, I did a full Should You Back on it. I did a full Should You Back video on it. The very short version of Primal. And I did a review, too. So I have a review of the game, playthrough of the game with Jesse on Quacklope's channel, uh, how to play on my channel, I think, and then the Should You Back It as well, which I put up last week. Now, Primal is a game that is expensive. Let's make no mistake here. This is expensive. Coming in at roughly $200. Once you factor in shipping, it's roughly $200 for the base entry point to this game and roughly $350 for the all-in. Again, that's combining shipping and all-in is relative. They just unlocked a, they just announced a sleeve pack, so all-in is relative, but gameplay all-in is $350. So I am hoping for that 3D, 3D scenery or whatnot. Someone pointed out that well, I, someone pointed out that I was wondering if they do an optional buy, and the optional buy in this case, so the all-in in this case, says gameplay all-in, so scenery is on the table, which I'm excited about because I want it. But in any case, the problem is, at $200 for your entry point to Primal, that effectively makes this one of the more expensive Kickstarters. Your typical Command, Mythic, Awaken Realms Kickstarter, those are big names. The typical big box, miniature heavy Kickstarter usually has a starting entry point of around $100, and so there's no denying that Primal is coming in at $200, at double the entry cost of those other games, a little less than double because shipping would really be a little bit less, so once you factor in shipping, but nonetheless, so that's an expensive entry point to a game that people want access to, and I understand the frustration. I do. Uh, the problem is, not the problem, the the fact of the matter is that most of the people I know who have been playing the game have in thoroughly enjoyed it and are raving about it, myself included. This is a game that I really, really like and really excited for, and, and I think it's good. I think it will hold its value just fine after the fact because of the quality here. Now, is it expensive? Yes, it's expensive. It's a more expensive entry point. You are getting a chunk full of bigger miniatures. Instead of getting, you know, 12 of the same tiny little sculpt, you're getting a larger miniature which has the same plastic of 12 smaller skulls, plus that huge drag or whatnot. So sheer quantity of miniatures is on the lower end. Sheer quality of the big miniatures is on the higher end, plus of course the 1800 cards you'll get if you went all in on this game. There's a lot of content, a lot of game creation, a lot of miniatures, a lot of boss fights, and more are being unlocked with stretch goals. They had a great update the other day, you should pay attention to this one, because I know they had a lot of people asking for more gameplay related updates. Update number six with new masteries unlocked and gameplay details was a great update. Going through some of the masteries, how they work, what it's like to, to switch up masteries, to have a build around a mastery, to have, you know, the, this, this burst mastery that when you unlock it, it's when you draw the last card in your deck, you deal six damage. So every time you cycle through your deck, you're doing six additional damage, which gives you all the incentive in the world to build a, a deck, a character, weapons, equipment, all that around cycling your deck as fast as possible. Having your other allies constantly assist you so you can draw more more cards so that you can cycle through your deck faster and faster. So you're all, you're gonna have these masteries that define how your character plays, and they go through it a lot more through each of the various bosses and all the other stuff here as well, covering a lot of weapons, showing you a lot of equipment, all the fun stuff that I've been able to experience, but you may not have been able to. So so read through the updates, see what's going on there, see what's for you. As far as uh, stretch goals, so stretch goals so far. So we're still in a place where I mean this thing is gonna hit two million dollars fairly shortly, and we're still in a place where they have said basically this is more successful than they anticipated. That this is did. Significantly better than they were expecting and hoping, and you have people who are understandably, I would say, understandably frustrated with some aspects of the campaign, although perhaps less understandably in how they're presenting it. And, and let's cover a few of those. So to begin with, we're going to have the fact that this game hits, you know, 1.8 million or 1.4 million within the first day, and the first stretch goal, the first daily unlock, is like three equipment cards, which is, I mean, I think it's a few more cards once you factor in what's included, the quest or whatever, but it's not a ton of content. 
and people are frustrated with that. The communication has been a little bit on the lower side, not terrible, but also not amazing. You have people sitting there frustrated about the VAT situation, frustrated about you know whether VAT is being covered or taken from their pledge, asking where all the where's all this extra money going towards. Now, the fact of the matter, the first starting point here is is in a, when a Kickstarter does well, it's still their money. They don't they they owe you only as much as they want to engage in that 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 conversation, meaning just because they sacrifice. I mean, you know how many companies sit there and sit there and sacrifice and build up a Kickstarter for years and then it doesn't go well? Do they get anything extra when a Kickstarter doesn't go well? So they invested time, energy, effort, and attention and have built up this Kickstarter that's hopefully doing very well and and that's fine. And they can they can relish in their success. That's okay. It doesn't mean they have to sit there and cut into every single degree of profit margin to give you every single thing they want or can. At the same time, there likely is a bit of a push and pull in terms of that relationship if you want to build a longer lasting relationship and to that end they have constantly made it clear that they are still looking into their options they're still looking into what they can do what they can add they're still making adjustments supposedly i don't know if it's true or not supposedly the sleeve pack that they offered is because of customer feedback now it may well not be it may be that that was offered that was going to be offered all along especially because it's an optional buy it's not like a stretch goal they threw in that being said like i said already for myself I love what I see in this game. I love the amount of content in this game. I love the the gameplay content in this game. The miniatures, while on the fewer side, are larger, and I'm excited about getting those to my table. And some of those some of those stretch goals, those optional buys. I mean, look at let's go through the stretch goals we have so far. Because what we have so far is not a ton, and I get the frustration. I really do. I just I still think it's a worthwhile deal at the end of it. So as far as stretch goals, so let's go down over here. We had a few stretch goals. We had day one, new equipment. Day two, new scenarios. So this is the aspect that they're giving like these, uh, you know, harder modes to different bosses that they are unlocking a few at a time, which has people frustrated on two counts. Frustration one is you're giving us like a difficulty level as a, as a daily unlock. I mean, it, there's only a handful of days in this campaign. You're giving us a difficulty level. Just throw that in the game. Why is it a daily unlock? And then stretch goal frustration two is... You're, how many, like, are, why are not all the monsters getting uh, difficulty enhancements? Is it only going to be a handful? That seems so weird. Why only some of the monsters we can fight in a higher difficulty? Why not everyone or anything? And again, I understand the frustration. It's uh, I do. I get it. Uh, day three, we have the hunt for Tarasco, which is a whole different thing. I'm going to come back to that one shortly about the whole way that played out. Day four is new mastery, which is fun. That's great. That was at the mastery update. Day five, another elite boss. Day six, it looks like another uh, difficulty level or whatnot, another elite boss, and then day seven, we get another one of these miniatures. And so let's talk about the, and again, those miniatures look cool. This guy, I don't know what he is, but looks cool. As far as the hunt for Tarasco, let's talk about that one because that was another bit of fun drama. And again, lots of surprising amount of drama in this in this game over here, in this Kickstarter campaign. So over here, we have hunt for Tarasco. They unlocked Tarasco. They gave you the name. They gave you this miniature. It looks cool. looks like I want to fight him. Who knows? All that. And then they gave you a hunt quest. You have to tw take down 12,000 HP on the hunt for Tarasco. And you do that by, you know, taking quest actions and liking and, and liking their Instagram and liking the Facebook post. And we have people losing their minds in the comments. People who are like, this is a daily unlock that we now have to further unlock. This is an additional level of, of barrier to getting at the stuff you're giving us. When we were already frustrated with the lack of stretch goals and lack of content that was being added to the game. And so now you give us something that's not only, okay, great, congratulations, but you have to like work to unlock it. And again, I understand where it's coming from, but look at the reverse side. The first thing is this thing was unlocked in three hours, so we can take a chill pill about just how locked this actually is. You have to follow campaigns, but these things don't actually stay locked. Of course they were going to give it, of course it was going to be added. Even if you didn't go to Facebook and hit like on something, it was still going to be in the game. So we can take a little bit of a grain of salt with the whole, how dare you put content that I won't be able to get my hands on. Secondly is... It's a mutually beneficial relationship aspect. If you, The more you share the campaign, the more you click like on things, the more Facebook will show that to more people, the more it will spread, the more other people will jump on, the more money can potentially enter the campaign, and all your arguments about how more, more money can potentially lead to other things might lead to more things. It's not, it costs you two seconds to go ahead and like it, and now they have a Facebook photo that got like 600 likes in two seconds, or whatever, two hours, and is now being shared and helps the company grow. It helps a mutually beneficial thing. It's not a big deal. I understand the frustration behind it, but when you think it's through the actual impact or consequence here is minimal we have yeah i'm not gonna i don't want to go through an individual person here but yeah people are frustrated about the whole situation and that's basically going to be the update around primal lots of people lot, lots of people frustrated about a lot of small things that don't really matter in the big scheme of things i will admit i am right there with all of you who are hoping for more content for this game i am right there with everyone who wants a scenery pack who wants 14 new monsters added to the game who wants this that and everything i love this game and i want more content 100 percent but I also just don't think it's that big a deal the way it's playing out, and I think you're getting a lot of content for the game either way.
Check out that coffee mug, by the way. That's that's a good coffee mug. In any case, so moving on from Primal, which was a lot as a lot of time in Primal. Fallen Knight, time for more drama. Fallen Knight, the Kickstarter. So this is one. This is a sad one. Fallen Knight is a Kickstarter that seems to be replicating Kingdom of Death Monster to a degree. The art seems to be replicating Kingdom of Death Monster. The giant black box seems to be replicating Kingdom of Death Monster. The four heroes and seven monsters seems to be replicating Kingdom of Death Monster. Some of the miniatures, if we scroll down to, like, the minimalist artwork's a little bit different, so I'll give them that, a little bit different there. If we scroll down some of the miniatures or whatnot, I mean, look at this thing. That thing over there kind of looks like Kingdom of Death Monster. We have this one over here as well, where we go. Look at this art. This whole thing is very reminiscent of Kingdom of Death Monster. And people were excited about this. I have no problem with uh, I have no problem with inspiration. I have no problem with taking something that worked and trying to expand upon it. The market will decide if it's a success or a fail failure. The market will decide if it added to the hobby and engendered more beneficial, you know, whatevers, or whether it's just a sad clone that no one's interested in. The problem we have here is I don't know what I don't know what has people excited about this game past the similarities to Kingdom Death Monster. I don't know what aspects of, of validation they have brought to the table to make people be so hyped up and be willing to dump a ton of money their way. Now, this project is cancelled. The problem we have here is they launched this project, then they spent, they had no content creators whatsoever at all, they had no real information, they had no rulebook, the gameplay is not finished, they had like nothing on this page, people gen genuinely have no idea how this game plays at all, like I mean, it's maybe it's like King of Death Monster, but if you read through the page, the amount of actual content here is minimal. And then they kind of got a lot of feedback in the comments, like a lot of pushback about how they weren't doing anything, and didn't respond to a single comment for like the entire day. Meaning, a lot of things about what's going on with this project, with Fallen Knight, have me genuinely concerned that they just don't know the landscape. Nothing they did could have possibly succeeded in the current Kickstarter landscape. And that degree of ignorance does not mean that Fallen Knight is a bad game. It does not, in the slightest. But it also means that I have much less confidence that Fallen Knight would be a good game. Because it means they're not aware of the landscape that's going on. Either one of two things. Either they're not aware of the landscape and that's not a good sign for the game they are creating. Or they are aware of the landscape, chose to ignore it, which is arguably a worse sign for any decisions that are going around this game. Fallen Knight will be back on Kickstarter. It, they, they canceled it, they said they'll be back, they're going to finish the rulebook, they're going to finish whatever. Supposedly the game has been in development for five years. But if, they're, if they don't have something to show you after five years, then how are they going to deliver the game in the next year and a half, two years? Fallen Knight will be back. I caution you to be very... to do your due diligence before you back it when it does show up. It does not... It's, these, aren't, these are not words that I take lightly. I'm effectively advocating for you to withhold money from a company that is trying to succeed. But I'm not actually advocating you hold it back. I am advocating you do your due diligence and look into the reasons to back because they have to give you reasons to back. It can't just be they throw up a few miniatures and you throw money their way, especially after what just happened with this campaign. It has been a bit of a mess, and it should be a cautionary tale for Kickstarter in general, and specifically for this campaign, if or when it does return. Just just make sure there's a reason. Make sure there's a rule book. Make, make sure there's something that gives you a genuine reason to throw $150, $250 at this game when it shows back up on Kickstarter. I wish them all the success in the world, genuinely. But make sure there's a reason you give them money. It just For yourself, for your own money. Unless, of course, you just don't mind, in which case, go for it. From there, let's move to Masters of Mutanite. The innovative spatial deck building game. And this one is it's still very close to funding. Not yet there. Four days to go. It'll likely cross that finish line, but just limp over. I covered it briefly uh, two weeks ago, I think it was. But oh, maybe it was last week. I think it was two weeks ago. But anyways, Master of Me tonight. I covered it already. But it's a you know it's a lighter game, King of Tokyo style game, but deck building instead of Yahtzee rolling mechanisms or whatever. And it looks interesting, looks fun, but also it's not getting a ton of traction despite a bunch of content creators who seem to be fairly impressed with it. Uh, that's Master of Me tonight, and I, I, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not backing it myself either. Uh, I, I'm curious about the game, but not curious enough to jump in on the Kickstarter myself. And that's gonna be Master of Me tonight. Just shouting it out in case we can get you know a handful of people to jump over the finish line and take it to that extra three thousand dollars. Moving from there, we have the Rune Lords board game. So the Rune Lords board game is on Kickstarter for the second time. The first time round, it did not fund. The second time round, it looks like it's on track to fund, but it's a little harder to tell. You see, on the one hand, $24,000 based on how far they are into the campaign normally would be an easy sell. They will fund. It'll hit the finish line. No problem whatsoever. The problem is $24,000 at this point with a relaunch is a little harder because effectively with a relaunch, you've picked up a large portion of your original audience, which means it's not that same traction level you're typically going to see. So... 
it's likely going to cross that finish line, but it's definitely it's definitely on the, the pushing it side. As far as what the Rune Lords is, the Rune Lords is a deck-building, hex-based skirmish game that's based on the Rune Lords, and I believe it has a CCG aspect. As usual, things that aren't fully funding, I'm not doing a full deep dive into it, but overall, looks interesting. You know, again, it's it's you know on its way towards hopefully funding. We'll see how it plays out. The the deck building itself looks interesting. The card, uh, the card templating is not pulling me in as much as I'd like. Looks a little bit, uh, you know, I don't know, four years ago or something. I don't know. It just looks look, looks a little more squared or boxed in. But overall, I'm intrigued to see where the game goes. I know I've seen a few content creators who have gone on about how the game is very well. Like Michael Kelly's One Stop Co Shop, Super Fun Trout, New Combinations for Your Rune Lord Recruits. And I know if you watch this video, he has more stuff to say as well. Overall, I'm intrigued with the game, but uh, I, they, they're going to have to sell people, which is always a, a challenge in terms of seeing how that plays out. Uh, from there, we go to the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower 2021. I meant to cover this last week. I totally forgot because it's not a board game, so it's not on my typical list. I had to forget about it last week, at which point I put it on my list for this week. And the Dice Tower. The Dice Towers. Let's talk about the Dice Tower. With $281,000 raised, $6,235 $6, backers, and six days to go, the Dice Tower is not a board game. It has a ton of promos. If you want to jump in and back for a bunch of the promo options, there are rewards here. We have Jaws of the Line scenarios, sticker sheets, component bins, more and more, more and more scrolling down. You can go through tons of different options here. Game Totes, Play Mats, Metal Dice, Werewolf Pack, etc., etc., Scrolling down further, we get to the, for $50 each, you get the promo packs, and those will give you the promo pack A, promo pack B. You can go through the page to see what's in those promo packs, C, D, etc., E, D, uh, F, get one of the custom dice towers, voicemail. You get a $50 for a voicemail. That seems pretty fun. Uh, what else do we have? We have the combination of promo packs for $275. We have all gone. We have Jigsaw puzzles. We have game show guests. We have game show guests. Cool. We have uh, $240, all the promos, custom dice peep. Okay, for $250, you get the custom dice peep. I believe they said they were going to be adding more of these. Tom put an announcement they're going to be adding more of these. That's effectively being drawn as one of these dice people, which is a fun thing. Point is, you can get a ton of stuff here. You can get a ton of extra stuff in terms of backing this. But that's not the reason to back it. The reason to back it is is the same reason I'm backing it. And I, I am backing this. Is because the Dice Tower, I don't know who you are, but either the Dice Tower has been instrumental in your personal board game journey. You've benefited from their videos. You've watched their stuff. You've made decisions around their videos for years, decades perhaps. Or you've benefited from the, benefited from the general ecosystem that they've created. The Dice Tower is is the name that's been around for board gaming for reviews since who knows when. There are people who did it before. Scott Nicholson, I believe, did reviews before Tom Vassell, I believe. I don't know my timeline perfectly. But Scott Nicholson no longer does board game reviews, or at least not to the same degree. He does it, he actually has the occasional video, so he does have things they just started doing again recently. But the Dice Tower has been the, has had the longest track record in terms of putting out content that benefits the board game space. And that means something. There are other channels that have popped up since then. Uh, Shut Up and Sit Down. We have Watch It Played, who's been around for a long time now. We have Rado. Rado's been around for a long time, too, the truth is. But there are a handful of people who have literally built the ecosystem that we live in. For myself, I'm incredibly grateful because the reason I'm able to do what I do, the reason I'm able to sit in front of a camera and talk about board games, is because other people did it first. I have benefited from the space they have built, both as a content creator and as a board gamer. The amount of games I have bought because of Tom Vassell more specifically because of Sam Healy, honestly. He was always my favorite in terms of the crew. Nothing against the rest, just he was my favorite. But their videos, today, last year, every every year, their videos are frequently a part of my buying decisions. And to that end, I, I'm supporting this Kickstarter because, you know, it seems like a good opportunity to do it. Uh, but that's basically it. Uh, it's more of a shout-out for the Dice Tower. Will it hold its value? I mean, it depends how you define it. You're not getting your money back on whatever you back here. Even those promo kits, they tend to be a bit overwhelmed. You can, If you're really willing to put the work in and pillage through the promos, maybe you can get some money back. But ultimately, that's not the reason to back this campaign. The reason to back this campaign, the reason to back the Dice Tower 2021, is because the Dice Tower is an instrumental key player in this space in terms of the good that they bring. And they're supported primarily by the audience. Uh, they have, you know, they have sponsorships and whatnot, but the these, this Kickstarter is one of their, I believe it's one of their, their biggest ways of raising money and especially in a year of COVID especially nowadays when they can't run their typical conventions their dice tower crews when for the sake of, of public safety they can't do many of the things they would typically do to earn money this year more than ever is a reason to to jump in and and throw a few dollars their way and that's basically going to be the dice tower 
Moving on from there, we have Call of Madness. Call of Madness is a competitive deck building board game in which you are the cultist. This is not a game where you are trying to destroy and stop the cultists from taking over the world. You are the cultist, and those poor people do not understand that you are really doing everything that's in their best interest. And it's a deck building game with like take that elements, which for me personally has me a little bit off to the sideline. I take that. I like. I don't mind take that in games when it's kind of incidental, like terraforming Mars, when it's kind of in the game. I definitely don't like it when it's a big part or focus of the game where it seems to be here. I say it seems to be. I have not played it. I'm just judging based on what I've seen uh, from top, from terms of the gameplay content and whatnot. What they've shown, at, what they've shown for the game it has tower defense elements and whatnot. Uh, this is going to be there. This is a comp from a company from what's the name from? I can't pronounce it. From Chaka Games. Chaka Games. Uh, but anyways, this is going to be, they have put out a whole bunch of Kickstarters, this is like their 10th or 9th Kickstarter they've put out. In general, this falls in the category of it may well be your best opportunity to get this game, but it likely will not hold this value. With 680 backers and 8 days to go, maybe they hit 800, 900 backers, which means there's not a lot of copies out there in the wild. In terms of whether they'll hold this value at $40, 40 euro plus shipping, for, for basically $50 plus shipping to get the game. For the content you are getting, it is unlikely to hold its value in terms of resale value, but because of the limited uh, access to the game, it's likely to be your best opportunity to get the game. And that's going to take us to, to The Road, a solo card game of survival and destiny. So, The Road. The Road, this is going to be a game by... Uh, is it Yusuf? I don't know his name offhand. His name is, uh, I think it's Yos Yosef or Yusuf. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe Yosef. Yosef Far Fari. I don't know the name, unfortunately. Uh, I believe he's from France. So, this is going to be the same person who put out The Way of the Samurai. If we go to their previously created games and we take a look at what they have over here on the table. We have Way of the Samurai and the Way of the Samurai expansion were what we previously put out. Both of those games, and I covered uh, B Blood and Bushido, whatever it is in the past, Way of the Samurai is going to be a solo game similarly to The Road, and it was a well-rated game that surprisingly held its value. I say surprisingly because the price point of these games is in the range of $30, $40 for what is effectively a deck of cards. When you compare that to any other deck of cards game, when you compare that to, I can't think of any games, uh, Oh My Goods or... I don't know. What else do we have? I have to look at my shelf over here. But if you compare it to other decks of cards, that is definitely on the high point of what you're paying for versus what you're getting in content alone. And so that's why I say surprisingly, because it was a well rated game, overpriced for the amount of content you're getting, but not necessarily overpriced for the game itself. But in terms of, at the end of the day, someone has to pay for the designer's time, which means the price of any object is going to factor into its availability. And for both these games, for Way of the Samurai and for The Road, these are Kickstarter-only games, which leads to that availability question. And a lot of the backers, if you pay attention to the 1,767 backers, a lot of them are going to be from France. We look at the backers over here, we have The Road French Edition, 1,123 backers, and English Edition is 586 backers, which means, depending on who you are, fact that in, in terms of your ability to potentially pick this up on the second-hand market. The Road, the English Edition, if you're in America and you're trying to pick it up, there's currently 586 people backing this. It means 586 copies are the current maximum that will be available on the second-hand market, and it's likely to be a small subset of that, which goes into why this has successfully held its value, or why, more specifically, why The Way of the Samurai has successfully held its value. So The Road, if it proves to be a good game, similarly to The Way the Way of the Samurai is, it likely will hold its value as well. Again, not one you're likely to make your money on, because... It's hard to sell something like this for a profit when it's already $40 for a bunch of cards. On the other hand, it may be your best or only opportunity to get it, which leads to that whole, you know, not a great buy component-wise, but possibly your best opportunity to get your hands on it. As far as the game itself, it represents the journey of being on a road across six days. You have to go through six days, six levels of encounters, whatever it is, figuring out what your options are and responding accordingly. It is a solo game, one that, of course, like any solo game, you can play it. Like, they, put a, they made a note of you can play it cooperatively in a sense with two people just talking about the decisions still just a solo game and you can play any solo game cooperatively if you just have two people making decisions but it's basically survival along a road that's effectively what it is a puzzle being presented and figure your way through that one moving on from there we have carnegie Carnegie, which I just finished playing a game on Tabletop, uh, Tabletopia, no, Board Game Arena. I just finished playing a game of Carnegie on Board Game Arena, and I'm intrigued. I'm not sold yet. I'm intrigued, but I, I, I want to get a few more games in, and I plan on getting a game in person as well. I do have a prototype of the game, which I plan on getting a few games in, so I could hopefully have a review up this Saturday. I say hopefully. We'll see if I can get a few more plays in in time. But eventually, essentially, Carnegie, to begin with, is by Xavier Georges, who is one of my favorite designers. He has put out a ton of games that I thoroughly enjoy from... Carson City to Black Angel to Twa. I think, but Black Angel I actually haven't played yet. Twa, I, I love Black Angel's re implementation. I believe he did Gingopolis as well. He has done a bunch of games that I have really enjoyed. And this is going to be by, by what's it called? The company's name is Quinnette Games. Quinnette Games has put out a bunch of stuff, including Carson City as well. And it's worth noting. 
He also paid attention to different Kickstarters. Not all their games were under the Quinnad Games Company name. So you have to go back to the other Kickstarters to look at other names. So if you Google, if you Google Carson City, you'll see it's actually run under a different name, despite being a Quinnad Games edition. As far as the game so far, we're at two hundred forty thousand dollars raised, twenty four hundred twenty four hundred backers, thirteen days to go. Stress goals being unlocked, and the current pledge level is primarily really just one pledge level. Fortunately, they're not doing one of those. Hey, here's a retail edition that's overpriced thingy. Instead, they're giving you one option, or unless you want to group buy, and that one option is going to be eighty dollars. 65 euro for the Carnegie Deluxe Edition and let's see what that includes because that's relevant. As far as the game itself, let's talk about the game briefly. The game itself is going to basically be a re-implementation, not re-implementation, it's going to be you are basically inspired by the life of Andrew Carnegie with who one of the richest people alive had to do with railroads and whatnot and a philanthropist. All of those aspects are, uh, are represented to some degree in the game. The game ultimately represents 20 rounds in which every single round one person chooses the dominant action that is being implemented by everyone. So you have to build out your tableau, you have to build out your company in order to both benefit from your own uh, unique advantage so you can activate your own action and benefit more than other players while ensuring you don't leave everything else behind because then you won't be able to do much when other people choose actions. So it's a, it's a balance of trying to benefit yourself but make sure you're not left out and also choosing actions that are most beneficial to you but not as beneficial to others both on what they have, the timing of what they have, the people and all that. In those actions, you're going to be building up more aspects to your company. You're going to be putting your company or distributing your company to across this board over here to build these lines. You're going to be uh, d doing different donations or whatnot, which will give you effectively victory points. So you have to give money, which will give you victory point criteria. So you'll be say, hey, I'll, here's five money, and I get two points for every building I have in the red region. Oh, look, here's ten money, because it goes up every single time. And now I get uh, two, four points for every area that I've gotten to the max level of railroad. It's a whole bunch of stuff like that where your donations are effectively victory point multipliers for whatever areas of the game you have done well in but factor in that it's first come first serve someone else gets there first and now you have to fight for some other area to desperately get your hands on victory points you do that all across 20 rounds while benefiting from the interplay of different things happening and that's effectively the game uh the the main thing that's going to differentiate itself compared to other games in uh, not this genre, I guess in the tight Euro genre, is that aspect of one player chooses an action that all players at the table have to partake in to some degree that's a condensed version of how to play Carnegie. Whole lot more you can actually go into. As far as the game itself, so pay attention to this Kickstarter. Uh, where we go over here? Um, it will not. The pledge now to get the Kickstarter ex exclusive version. It will not be available after the campaign. All the Kickstarter exclusive elements are highlighted with the K. Now you have to be aware that is not entirely true. Okay, it's not entirely true. We'll get into it. So to begin with, we have the box itself, which is coming in. I keep in mind little bit of an interruption. At $80 for this game, this game will likely be roughly half the price at retail. So factor that in as we go through what's included and whether it makes sense for you to jump in on all those extras. Begin with, we have the game board, which will fortunately be available in the retail version. It would be hard to play without that. We have four wooden action markers. So these markers over here will have wooden markers with heat transfer print. I'm not sure if in the regular game they're going to not be wooden or not have heat transfer print. But these are more special than whatever else coming in the base game. We have 56 department tiles. So in the base game alone, you, for each of the four departments, you're going to have these different department tiles. So you can have four, 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 and four. 16 unique different department tiles, two copies of each. But in the Kickstarter version, you have for each of those rows so far, and there's more still being unlocked, for each of those rows so far, you have an additional three. So instead of having four unique departments for each faction, you have seven, which is a big deal because in this game, you're going to pick a distribution of the various departments that enter the game, and then you're going to, yeah, I think, I don't I, I, I have to double check. I'm not sure how it factors in with the, the extras over here. But in the base game, before we get into that, you basically have 16, I think it is. I have to double check the numbers of the rulebook. I have to remember what it was. But you have a whole bunch of these departments entering the game, and those departments each give you unique ability as to how you build out your tableau. And so variety is key in terms of the more variety you have in this game, the more replayability you will have, the more the, uh, elements you'll have. We have to try to figure out what the puzzle is with different combinations of tiles. And so for me, these department tiles and the variety they give are absolutely key. But this is also worth noting that these are not Kickstarter exclusive, seemingly. Meaning seemingly, if you actually pay attention to the, the, the if you scroll down, it seems that these extras are going to be available to be bought later separately. So it's not that they're Kickstarter exclusive, it's that they are Kickstarter, you will get them as part of your Kickstarter, other people can buy them after the fact. I don't know if that's true for the other Kickstarter exclusive stuff, let's go through them shortly. So, 
one department board. We got a specific department board. These are where you'll be putting the tiles for those various um for those various departments. We have the company boards, etc. First player marker, talent marker, 120 player disc, wooden markers with silk screen print. And again, same thing as before. I don't know if the Kickstarter exclusive part is that they're wooden or that they're silk screen or both. So I'm not sure there, but something about these are special. Uh, some basic stuff, basic stuff. The game trays insert. That's a big deal. Getting a game trays insert as part of the Kickstarter exclusive edition is a big deal. That's a $30 value right there. If you're buying an aftermarket insert, if game trays does a solid job on their insert over here, you're talking about a decent value on the game right there alone. Uh, if we scroll down, we can see the actual stretch goals, which is where you can see the inconsistency in the messaging. So over here, you can see will be available for the retail version, but as a paid add-on. These are the same departments that you saw unlocked. They will be a paid add-on for the actual uh, down the road. This one, on the other hand, is exclusive. So again, it's a mix. You have to be conscious of that as you look at that other image. Uh, past that, if we keep scrolling down, you can see that the next unlocks we're going to be seeing are an extra thick cardboard for the game board, four new departments, bringing us to doubling the amount of departments you can have in the game, which to me is absolutely key. A special ink relief on the box, premium sleeves for all the cards, meaning this is not a paid add-on, at least I don't think it will be, but it seems to be an included optional thingy, well not optional, an included stretch goal for the game, that you'll have premium sleeves for all the cards in the game, and then for 280,000, 280,000 euro, they're going to be new custom donation tiles. These are donation tiles that will cover or replace the core donation tiles in the base game, again, adding to the variability. If you have different donations, different combinations of how you can achieve end game victory points, that will drastically mix up the gameplay that you're, you're doing. That puzzle you managed to slow figure out is different if you have different ways of earning points and therefore because you can overlay this on the board you can have any combination of the two which is gives you a lot of potential options of how you can actually play out those victory point options and then potentially even more stretch goals this was where we're at so far we still have 13 days to go to see what else happens there should you back it? The short version of Carnegie is likely yes. The price point of $80 plus shipping is high, don't get me wrong. But once you factor in the degree of extra gameplay content you have, as well as the extra Kickstarter exclusive upgrades, as well as the the, um, the stuff that as well as the game trace insert, what you're looking at here is probably one that will hold this value, especially if the game is good. And I believe my, I'm not sure what well, well, we'll see where I end up myself, but I can tell you the game is good. That's not my question at all. Whether it's a game that I personally love and am interested in myself, I like it a lot it's a different style of game i want to get a few more plays in to see where it lands with me uh it, on the one hand it's reminiscent to me of games like coinbra which i love and enjoy on the other hand it's reminiscent of games like pipeline which i think are excellent games that i don't like as much meaning it's a little bit of a heavy crunchiness which i for me it's very situational when i like it but i think the game is good that's not my concern at all the, the game is available on board game arena and on tabletop simulator if you want to give it a shot go ahead jump in you can watch john gets games uh, tutorial it's about an hour long but he plays through the game you'll get a good feel for how the game plays then you can jump on board game arena and start playing with other the people and go from there and see if it's for you overall i think it will hold its value but i'm not certain about it it is expensive but it does give you a lot of stuff i think it's a fairly safe back all things considered and from there that brings us to the castle of mad king ludwig collector's edition wow getting you need a break here castle of mad king ludwig collector's edition 5,774 backers, $754,000 raised, and I just did a Should You Back video on it yesterday. You can check out that whole thing, so I'm going to do a very short version of this one. The short version is you cannot help but compare this to Suburbia, both in the gameplay as well as the collector's edition aspect. Castle Mad King Ludwig was the uh, spiritual successor to Suburbia, giving that same basic idea of the gameplay, but a different actual game, but the same basic uh, genre of taking tiles that all score off each other and will all help you get to some sort of amazing score at the end, plus different uh, criteria, rewards, all these things that factor into it. And then they, they, in addition to the gameplay itself being similar, they now have a collector's edition of the of Castle Mad King Ludwig, the same way they did a collector's edition of Suburbia. And so this one overall, comparing it to that one, the very short version, again, I did a full video yesterday on this, but the very short version is, it is likely that this one will hold this value. This is giving you a ton of stuff extra. It's giving you uh, the game, let's see if we can scroll down over here. Let's see if we can scroll down to what's coming in this game. So, we have the game itself. What's inside? We have the Game Trace insert, which again, already is a decent value. We have new artwork in terms of updated art on various tiles. We have the expansions. It's giving you two new expansions. More modules and expansions factor that in. It's giving you the old expansions. It's giving you secrets plus the limited Polish expansion, which is a bunch of promo tiles or whatnot. And then it's giving you the decrees and the towers, which are set of the new two new modules expansion, as well as these 3D towers. Uh, it's giving you this giant scoreboards, which you can configure two different options in terms of how you want to play that out. If you go for the Royal Upgrade, which is going to be in Instead of $99, it's going to be $129. It's going to give you a bunch of metal metal coins, the Luxified chips, and these glassy smooth swan tokens. If you go for the Colossal Upgrade, it's going to give you tiles that are four times the size in case you want that amazing, you know, at a convention feel for slapping these down on the table and taking up a ton of space, which is a pro and a con depending on your table space. That is in terms of
of what you're getting here. The short version, if you want to see how I got to there, you can watch yesterday's video. But the short version is I believe all these are likely to hold their value to some degree, at least initially. If you look at the original Suburbia, it held its, it was able to sell at a profit for quite some time initially. And over time, it filtered down to more an appropriate value in terms of pe people paying what their original game cost on Kickstarter. And that's like a year and a half later. So, I believe Castle Mad King Ludwig is likely to hold the same traction to a degree, likely will sell at a profit when it first lands, and then over time will settle down to being roughly equitable to what people pay for it. And that is Castle Mad King Ludwig. Which brings us to the final thing of the day, which is not going to be a gaming table, but instead is going to be the Origins. Did I say it's not going to be a gaming table? That's a Freudian slip right there. It's not going to be a board game. Instead, it's going to be the Origins Gaming Table, an exquisite and functional board game table that's been in development for two years by a company that makes poker tables, and so they have... I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know what's going on with me. So... The Origins Game Table has been developed for over two years. It's by a company that has a history of making poker tables. So they have a lot of, of industry knowledge. And what they did with this game is that with the game and table, geez, what they did with this table is actually very smart. They did two waves here to kind of test the market, so to speak. They had a bunch of stuff where they cooperated with uh, Geek Dad, with Ant Labs Games, with, with Board Game Geek, and they had a first run where people can sign up for like a pre-order and get the table, which they've now all successfully delivered. So they've gone through the fulfillment, they've gone through the issues, they've effectively market tested their table, and now they're doing the full Kickstarter to make it available to absolutely everyone instead of more of a limited initial release. Uh, it's going to be coming in at roughly $1,500 for the game table, and uh, that's going to be with free shipping. Okay, so free shipping is on the one hand. On the other hand, factor in that all the extras, including the topper are an additional cost so if you want that topper let's see if we can scroll down here if you want the topper add-ons $44 for an extra neoprene mat $199 for a graphic template $299 for a custom graphic layout $500 for the dining top so if you want that topper it's going to be $500 bunch of extras the $85 dice tower the $65 tiered tray for you can put a whole bunch of component trays over here and whatnot $420 for matching chairs, etc. Brass cup holders, etc. We have a whole video. If you want to see some videos, uh, Cracklob had a video giving you a showcase of the video of the table and how he played. Uh, Ant, Lab, Ant Lab Games had a video covering the initial uh, print run. They talked about, they, they mentioned in a comment they might re approach the video, so we'll see how that plays. Uh, plus, watch the videos from them themselves. Like I said, they, they are in the business. It's not their first thing. You can watch this original video, the Orange and Kickstarter two years in the making, plus their video on all the extras and whatnot covering what you get for that. And they had pretty solid videos showcasing what you're actually getting here. Ultimately, this is a game table. I'm not talking about whether it holds its value or not because that's not, I mean, I can't, I don't really imagine game tables hold their value. I don't imagine you can get your money back fully by selling it, but I'm sure someone will pay you something for it. Uh, uh, Quacklow focused very heavily on how easy it was to assemble from when he got it. He said like it was like 15 minutes from when they got it to unbox it to getting it together. It comes in mostly pre-assembled. The main top area is pre-assembled and the bottom legs just screw on. just like eight screws total and boom, Bob's your uncle and now you have a gaming table. So overall, looks very intriguing. If you are interested in a gaming table, add this to the list of gaming tables that have hit Kickstarter. We have a whole bunch. We've had Geek and Sons. We've had, we've had obviously the big one. Board, what's the big one? I can't remember. Board Game Tables hasn't done a Kickstarter for the tables, have they? I don't think so. The big one was... I'm blanking. What's the gigantic Kickstarter they did? The company uh, Woods... Uh, I can't remember the name. can't remember the name. Jeez, whatever. I'm going to keep talking now because you can't have dead air on camera. But that company, that company that had an $8 million Kickstarter, and I actually did a video on it, and I can't remember the name. It's They have a YouTube channel, too. I can't remember. In any case, Wormwood, Wormwood, thank you. Jeez, Wormwood Tables had a giant Kickstarter. Uh, and then my own, the, the, the company, not my own, the company, the table that I have is going to be uh, Geek, uh, Geek Chic, not Geek Chic. Jeez, I can't, I cannot get this right. Uniquely Geek. Uniquely Geek is the company behind the gaming tables that I own two of, and I like them as well. So basically, lots of gaming table options out there. Uh, feel free to grab, get your hands on whichever one is currently interesting to you. I'm just focusing on the Origins because it's on Kickstarter now. And that, this is longer than I thought it would be. That is going to be a roundup, another Kickstarter roundup, and I will see you next week with more Kickstarter stuff or whatever, because Kickstarter is still, uh, you know, still have stuff coming. So until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and have a good one. So, next week, I don't have anything cool planned, no jokes, no songs, no whatever, but I can tell you what's coming up next week, because why not? Next week, we have Mob Big Apple. This is going to be by uh, Gaming Goat Games, something like that. 
Uh, we have Human Punishment is launching on the 25th. Radlands, which is Roxley's newest game that I'm intrigued by, it's Radlands, is going to be launching on the 26th as well. We have Zodiac War, which is launching on the 26th. We have Reload. Reload is launching on the 26th. And Reload is a game that I actually had the opportunity to play. This is by... Jeez, I can't remember the name. I'm blanking on names today. Really not, not a good look. But Reload, them. I can't remember the name of the company. Reload is going to be a uh, one of those games... I'm blanking on every single name. It's unbelievable. What's that genre of game? Uh, Battle Royale. Reload is going to be a Battle Royale game by the same creators of Mezzo, whose name and Western Legends whose name I can't recall, but that's going to be launching on the 26th. I should give, give up on names. I should give up on the day. We have Cryptid, Cryptid Cafe launching on the 26th. Uh, Vigilante launching on the 28th. Candy Wars on the 31st. Force of Radagast on the 31st. And that's going to take us all the way through the next week, so to speak. And the rest from there we'll see in next week's video. That's basically everything. Uh, as always, have a good one.